Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back once again with the Wise security cameras. These are very inexpensive security devices that work quite well. In fact, this camera here costs about 25 bucks and their pan and tilt version costs under $40. But a lot of people want to maybe use these as inexpensive extensions of their existing security camera system and they haven't been able to do that unless they installed some hacked firmware to get it to work. But recently, Wise came up with an official firmware that allows you to use third-party DVRs like this Synology NAS device here while still using the WISE software as well. It's kind of the best of both worlds. And we're going to explore how it works in this video, and I'm also going to show you how to set it up on the uh, pan cam here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is not a paid sponsorship. However, WISE sent me the pan cam here free of charge. Uh, we did buy this one with our own funds not too long ago. I should also let you know that Synology is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. They are also not sponsoring this video, but they did supply this network attached storage device for a project we did on Surveillance Station, which is the software we'll be looking at today in this video. But again, nobody's paying for what you're about to see here. All the opinions are my own, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now. Let's see how this firmware works, and then again, we'll set it all up. Now, one important thing to note is that you have to download this firmware and install it manually from the WISE support site. Uh, they are running this as a separate branch of their firmware. They say due to a hardware limitation, they could not make it work with the main firmware you download automatically. I'll step through how to install it in a few minutes. And they also let you know that they don't have the resources to develop two branches of firmware at the same time. So what's going to happen here is that this branch is going to be updated infrequently and it may not get some of the newer features they have planned in the future, like AI, human, animal, and vehicle recognition, event video tagging, further stability improvements, and bug fixes. So you may not want to install it on every camera if you really enjoy the uh, mainline WISE experience. But I can say at the moment, all of the features of the camera at the time I'm recording this video work on the WISE side of things just fine, and you get the RTSP as a bonus. And I wanted to do now is just kind of step through how it works with a third-party DVR solution. Uh, so right now we're on my Synology Sur Surveillance Station homepage. And if I go over here to Live View, we can pull up my camera. And there it is, and it seems to be working just fine. I am noticing that there is a bit of latency in the time that it takes for actions that I am doing in front of the camera to sometimes show up uh, versus the app. And if we switch over to this two-up view here of the WISE app with the uh, Synology thing running here at the same time, you'll see the uh, WISE app apparently gets some priority as to when the video actually gets out to the device here. I'm also finding that occasionally the RTSP uh, server inside the camera will miss frames. So you're not going to get every frame, you'll get most of them. Uh, and of course the video quality here doesn't look spectacular either, but it does seem to be good enough for what you might expect out of a $25 camera. And of course I can get access to all the features of surveillance stations so I can look at the timeline. Uh, what it will do is of course record uh, every second of video that comes off that camera throughout the day and I can jump around to different sections of that. I could decide to use the Synology's built-in event detection if I wanted to versus relying on the cameras for example and all of that stuff seems to be working like any other camera would on my network. And what's also nice though is that you retain all of the features of what you expected on the WISE camera. So if I do the touch to speak here, hello, just testing. Touch to speak here, hello, just testing. I can do the two-way communication with the camera like I did before. Uh, we also looked at the WISE sensors the other day. This is called WISE Sense. They have these little door and motion sensors that work with the camera. Uh, we did a full review of that, which I'll again put down below in the master playlist so you can find some more info on that. And we have the uh, module to, con to conduct business with those uh, little sensor modules here in the back of the camera. And all of that is working. So if we switch back over to our two-up view here, I've got the Wise Sense sensor. Uh, keep an eye on Cookie Jar at the bottom of the list on the iPhone screen. Uh, as I pull apart the sensor here to simulate something opening, uh, you'll see that that cookie jar has now changed to open. So all of the Wise Sense sensors are working. SD card recording is working. Transmitting video up to the Wise Cloud from events is working. Everything that you're used to your camera doing will still work with Wise, but you get the RTSP again as a bonus that will work with other devices on your network. And it looks like the camera is relatively able to keep up with that. So let's see now how to install the firmware on our Wise Campan. So to install the firmware, we're going to go back to that page on the Wise support site. 
And what you want to look for is the how to set up RTSP section. And what we're going to do in this instance, because we are going to be updating the firmware on the pan camera here, uh, is that we're going to go and select the WiseCam pan RTSP file. If we were using the uh, little stationary square camera here, you would select the other option for WiseCam V2. Uh, so we're going to click on that, and what will happen here is it will download a zip file to our downloads directory. And what you want to do is extract that zip file. If you're in the Mac, you can double click on it. Uh, on the Windows side, you just right click and select extract all. Uh, so I'm just going to double click on that. It's going to jump our window back and forth here for a second. And you'll be left with a new file uh, called demo pan RTSP uh, blah, 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 dot bin. Uh, and what they want us to do here is rename it to just demo dot bin. And then what you need to do is get out a micro SD card. I've got one right here. Doesn't need to be very large. In fact, this file is only about 11 megabytes, uh, but you might want to use the card to record on later. So I've got a 16 gigabyte card. And I'm going to insert this into a card reader. And all I'm going to do is just drag that demo.bin file over to that SD card. And it will copy over very, very quickly here because it is just a very small file. And when that's done, I'm going to eject my SD card. And now we're going to go back to the camera here. And we're going to disconnect the USB plug in the back because that is, of course, what is powering the camera at the moment because we do have to start from scratch here. All right, so now that we have the power disconnected, I'm going to snap the SD card into the SD card slot. Uh, so that's ready to go. Now, before you reapply power, you want to hold down the setup button, which is right here. Uh, so you want to hold that down. And then we just have to plug in the USB power connector here. And what you want to do is wait for the light on the front of the camera here to turn blue. You'll see a blue hue to it. Uh, once that blue hue appears, then you can let go of the button. And then it will take about three or four minutes for that firmware to install from the SD card. So you can go off and do some other stuff. And when it's done, uh, you will be able to log back into the camera with the app. You don't have to set up your account or anything else. If it was already pre-configured with your WISE account when you started, uh, this new firmware will keep those settings. So all you have to do is boot up the app and access the camera like you did before. So let's wait for that firmware to finish up. We'll jump over to the app and continue our configuration. Okay, so the firmware has updated and we'll jump back to my iPhone here. You can see the pan cam is online and activated. And I can go ahead here and connect to it and operate it like I was before. The uh, controls here to move the camera around seem to be working still and all seems to be good. Uh, now what we want to do is go to the upper right hand corner of the screen now and select the gear icon. And what that's going to do is bring you into the device settings. And you want to go over to advanced settings and then scroll down to the bottom where you're going to see a new option called RTSP. And we're going to select that and we're going to switch that to the on position. Now what it's asking for is a username and a password that you're going to use to log into the camera. I'm going to keep something really simple here just to make it easier for demonstration purposes, but you can of course set this to whatever you want. Uh, we're going to call this pan cam and the password we're just going to say cam2 as the password. And of course you'll probably want to use something more secure than that. I'm now going to tap on generate URL and what that will do is give us the URL we need to connect to to use our third-party software with that. And what we're going to do now is switch back over to my Synology device here and go over to the IP camera option. And as you can see, we've got that stationary camera already in place. And now what we're going to do is add in the new camera that we just set up. So I'm going to click on Add Camera here. And again, this will be different depending on uh, how you usually set up things with your own DVR. Now on the Synology, they support a lot of different brands of cameras, but I'm going to go here to brand and select user define. And as you can see, it's got an RTSP uh, URL here already ready for us. And I'm just going to type in what we have on the other screen here. Uh, so it's going to be uh, pancam colon cam2 at 192.168.1.4 slash live. And if I go over here to test connection, it will begin connecting to the camera and trying to figure out uh, what it's capable of and there we go we've got that camera ready to go i just click on finish here so now we've got two cameras working with our synology nas here and if we jump back to that surveillance station interface and pull up the live view uh, you will see now that we have two cameras uh, pardon the mess it's been a little busy this week 
Uh, so we have the pan cam here on the right. It's called user defined at the moment. And then of course we've got the stationary camera right next to it here. Unfortunately, I cannot get the pan tilt and zoom controls to work on the pan cam at all. Uh, what I can do is go back to the uh, WISE app and control it with my phone. And as you can see, the camera will uh, respond to the WISE app, but I can't get those controls to work uh, through the Synology interface. And I'm guessing there's uh, some other protocol that has to be in play here for those commands to go back to the camera, because RTSP is mostly a streaming out protocol as opposed to any kind of two-way communication. So I was disappointed with that. I did do some research to see if anyone else has been able to get the pan controls to work on Synology. They have not. Uh, but if I am missing something, do let me know down in the comments below, and we'll try to shoot a follow-up video. Uh, but it does, though, appear that uh, everything here with both cameras running at the same time is working just fine. We are recording onto the Synology from both. The SD card, again, works fine on everything. I can jump to the timeline here uh, and select the camera that I want to look at. Uh, so if we go a little bit later here in time, you'll see both now uh, showing up in my timeline overview on the Synology interface. So very cool that you can do this. A uh, bit bummed out, though, that uh, it doesn't seem to be working with the pan and tilt features through third-party applications, but again, you can still jump into the WISE app for that. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, though, which is actually very important if you do intend on integrating these cameras into the rest of your network, and that is assigning them a static IP address. Now, one of my ongoing frustrations with the WISE cameras is that you cannot set up a static IP address from the device itself. So if we go into my pan cam here and go to device info, I've got the MAC address, I have the IP address that's been assigned by my router, but I don't have any way to manually assign an IP address. And the reason why you might want to do that is because the Synology server here is going to be looking at a specific IP address to get that camera feed for its recordings. And if your router assigns it a different IP after 24 hours, that's going to get broken and you won't be able to continue recording until you reconnect it to the new IP. Uh, so therefore, you need to jump into your router and set the uh, IP address manually through your DHCP server. And unfortunately, everyone's routers do this differently. So I'm going to show you my Synology router and how it works. But again, your mileage is going to vary significantly. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just sort my list by uh, the most recently connected devices. And you'll recall that when we uh, got the URL for our RTSP feed on the pan cam, it was registered as uh, 192.168.1.4. And if we jump back to my camera here real quick, you'll see that that is the IP address that's been assigned. Uh, so what I'm going to do on my Synology router here is just find the uh, listing on my uh, list of IP addresses on the network to find that one. And one of the cool things about the Synology device is that I'm able to assign that IP address to the reservation list with a single click. I can just click here uh, and that will add that uh, MAC address to my DHCP server so that every time that camera comes on the network, it will get the same address. Uh, but remember, your router might do this differently. What you might need to do is write down the MAC address of your camera and assign it that way. And you'll have to go into your router's instruction manual to find out exactly how to manually assign addresses via DHCP. My Synology router has a single click. Again, other routers are going to do it a little bit differently, but it's very important that you do this in order for this to continue working beyond the first day you set it up. So overall, though, it's good to see that WISE is responding to customers who wanted to see this functionality. I think if you are planning to integrate WISE cameras into your security network, it probably would make sense from a cost standpoint to go with the less expensive cameras given that the pan tilt zoom functionality at the moment does not appear to be working through the third party DVR recorders. Although again, you can control the pan and tilt uh, with the WISE app if you want to control it that way. But I do like the fact that this is officially supported now. If you like the features that you're getting out of your WISE cameras with your cloud stuff and uh, all the other things that you might be doing with them, uh, this is a nice add-on that doesn't take away any feature you're currently using, which makes it a lot better, in my opinion, for casual users like myself uh, to be able to add this RTSP without uh, having to give up the things about the WISE camera that I actually kind of like. So uh, there you go. It seems to be a good solution that is very, very easy to implement. Uh, let's take a look at one last thing before we wrap up, and that is restoring back to the original firmware.
Now, of course, normally your camera will get its firmware updated automatically, but if you do want to go back to the main branch of the firmware, we have to repeat the process we just went through. I'll put a link to the page that I have on screen here in the video description. You'll see here on the side that they have firmware listings for uh, the first version of the Wise Cam, the second, and the Cam Pan, uh, which is what we just were playing with here. And if I want to download the most latest version of that Wise Cam Pan firmware, I can just click on it here. It will download just like that RTSP firmware did. If we jump over to the file here and extract it, uh, what we'll get is a demo.bin that we copy back to that SD card, push the button down, power it up, and then that firmware will now replace what we just put in before. You'll lose the RTSP, but you'll be back on the main branch of the firmware and we'll get all of your usual updates with it. So that is it for uh, the RTSP official support. I am glad to see it is making its way out to uh, the power users in the WISE community, and I think it's something that I know a lot of you will get some use out of, and it's really convenient if you do have one of these fancy DVRs on your network to buy a bunch of these $25 cameras and set them up as floaters, if you will, and you'll have the ability to extend your network without having to add a lot of cost in the process. And again, you can still maintain the existing WISE features with this new branch of the firmware. That'll do it for this one. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.